if I were a fruit, I would not want to live in this world where I have a 30% chance of ending up in a stinking garbage bin. Sometimes just because some random human was thinking that I looked ugly. Imagine that 30% of all the food produced in this world is being thrown away. That is $750 billion in terms of economic loss, or enough food to feed two billion people, and easily enough to feed the world 800 million hungry. The math is simple, and UN has proved that by using the food that we already are producing, we will have enough food to feed the world's entire population until the year of 2050. But the reality is that a lot of the food we produce never reaches a human stomach and millions of people are undernourished. This got me and my friends, now teammates, thinking one cold night here in Lund last November. We had all the clear stats of food loss in front of us. And as an engineer, I like to simplify things. 30% food loss equals enough food for humanity. Why does it get thrown away? Sometimes because we have bought and prepared too much food, while some other times because it has passed its expiry date. Now, we can't do much about the first point, but we can do something about the latter. And our solution was simply to collect the near expiring fruits from farms and, and groceries and drying them, making them last up to two years instead of two weeks. And by powderizing the fruit, it will also become easier to transport while increasing its uses as a natural flavoring for food manufacturers. I like to call this idea taking dumpster diving to the next level. So, as I told you, me and my teammates started out here in Lund last November, 10 months ago, with an idea. And it has been an amazing ride so far. I absolutely love being a university student while trying to realize my own projects at the same time. Because some days I'm at school, drinking cheap coffee and owning my skills at calculating screw dimensions. And I'm much better at drinking coffee, I can tell you that. <laughs> While some other days I'm away in London, trying to pitch our idea for a business competition. And this different mix of ideas and environments makes me feel like a really happy banana. <laughs> and this is something I encourage all of you to do if you have an idea. Gather some friends, join a competition, and simply test it out. Uh, because what does knowing which screw dimensions to solve have to do with solving food security? Nothing. I mean, you don't have to be the biggest expert melon on the field when you start out. But if you have the passion, it will shine through, and people with the knowledge will come through and give you their help. And you will naturally learn getting better and better in that area. You and your team pave the way for yourself. Actually, the catalyst for our idea came through joining a student competition, which was called Fought for Food, and had a brief how to feed 9 billion people by the year of 2050. This competition was held in Lisbon and pulled us into a world filled with a lot of bright people trying to solve the food security question. Now, food security was defined by the World Food Summit as when all people at all times have access to sufficient, safe, and nutritious food to lead an active and a healthy life. We came in second place in this competition, and something had started boil inside me and my teammates. So after the first competition, we joined a second social entrepreneurial competition, where we launched a successful Kickstarter campaign. And at that time, when we had reached our crowdfunding goal, a journalist from Mashable contacted us and did an article about FOFO. One thing led to another, and soon our idea was spread throughout the world through magazines such as Huffington Post, City here in Sweden, and Time magazine. All this made us realize that not only was it us who believed in our idea, but people over the entire world were curious and supported our project. After the Kickstarter, me and my teammates traveled to the Philippines, Manila, to pilot test our project. We collected almost expiring calamansis which is a Philippine version of lemon with a very rich aroma. And because these calamansis were ugly and almost expiring, 
we got them for a lower price. During the pilot run, we used a drying technique called spray drying. Spray drying is when you take the fruits and turn it into a liquid by squishing it and insert it into a hot gas chamber resulting in a fruit powder. And we then use the fruit powder to make things such as baking, smoothies, ice cream, and for humanitarian aid. While in the Philippines, we got in contact with the government who let us know that they weren't using any fruits as a source of nutrients for humanitarian aid. Normally, when a typhoon or an earthquake strikes, and believe me, they do, the relief goods consist of canned goods and carbs. Only this time, there could be a potential for using nutrients in the shape of dried fruits, which were made from cheap produce, was easy to transport, and had a much longer expiry date compared to fresh fruits, FOFO. And at this moment of speaking, we're currently field testing FOFO together with the Philippine government to check the possibilities of using our fruit powder for humanitarian aid. During our first trial, we gave 400 school kids a cup of calamansi juice made from mixing one kilo of the calamansi powder we had produced during our pilot together with water, providing these 400 school kids with 3.7% of the daily intake of vitamin C. Now, you might wonder why these kids look so sad on this picture. <laughs> and it was because we had forgotten that most kids don't like when drinks are too sour. So we added sugar to the drinks and they became happy. <laughs> now, this number might not seem like much. But in the future, we are setting up to use another drying technique called freeze drying. Freeze drying is a commercial drying technique where you remove the water from the fruit through sublimation. Same physical principle that allows water to boil at a lower temperature on the top of Mount Everest. Because when you lower the pressure enough, water will evaporate even at temperatures of minus 80 degrees Celsius, going directly from ice phase into gas. And operating with these parameters is much kinder for the fruits and allows up to 90% of the nutrients to stay intact. Using this technique, one kilo of the calamansi powder would have provided more than 50% of the daily intake of vitamin C for these 400 school kids. And you can easily imagine what two kilos of this, two kilos would of this would do for these 400 school kids. And we at FOPA are always trying out different blends of fruits and different drying techniques to see how we can improve our products. And our goal is that in the future to provide a nutritional fruit powder made from the surplus of fruits for humanitarian aid and to the rest of the world, bridging a gap in the current food distribution system where so much of the food we produce is going to waste. So this is where this amazing journey has taken me and my team in 10 months. And in the future, the solution to solving food security might not only be about producing more food and exploiting more land, which requires a huge amount of water, but by using the resources that we already have. A wise person once said, one man's trash, another man's treasure. Thank you. <laughs>